You're listening to a podcast from digitaloilandgas.com. This podcast is entitled, What Oil and Gas Boards Are Asking About Digital. Boards of companies in the oil and gas sector are suddenly finding themselves in the digital debate and are informing themselves through questions about digital. And here are some of the questions. But first, which boards? Well, frankly, boards of all companies participating in oil and gas. That includes upstream explorers and producers in the conventional, unconventional, and offshore, the midstream participants, such as pipelines and tank operations, the downstream operators in retail, wholesale, and distribution, and suppliers to the industry. What's triggering these questions? Well, perhaps it's requests for some novel digital funding that are no doubt making their way to boards for approval. Or perhaps companies have been quietly hit with some ransomware cyber attack. Or a board member on an oil and gas company, who's also sitting on a financial services company, may be wondering why they're not seeing the same level of interest in digital in their resources uh, company. Or perhaps there's some early digital results that have either fallen short or, more appropriately, wildly exceeded expectations, which is triggering some introspection. First question boards ask is, is digital for real? Well, yes, it's absolutely real. The technologies that comprise digital, that is cloud computing, sensors, artificial intelligence, and so forth, are all evolving in ways that follow Moore's law, that is, a halving of cost and a doubling of capability every year. These technologies are now widely available to any industry, not just the tech sector in Silicon Valley. The Valley has also started to understand how to configure businesses and business models so that they can scale up very rapidly by making adoption cycles much shorter. A smartphone in every pocket is a start, but couple that to a user interface so easy to use it requires no training. Then distribute it through an app store to ease global distribution and access it through cloud computing so that it's available everywhere. Next, make it more like a game so it's mildly addictive and fund it using venture capital. And finally, promote it through social media. The effect is plainly visible in Uber's shockingly rapid growth. Next question is, will digital come to oil and gas? Some skeptics on boards will say, this can't happen in oil and gas. It's too regulated, too fragmented, it's too business to business. Operations here are 24-7 and can't be taken offline except in turnarounds or emergencies. Shareholder returns are still best served by exploiting the traditional investments of the sector. Well, that's not a bet I'm prepared to make any longer. Here's a few of the real examples of digital impacts drawn from a workshop that I attended on the impacts of digital on energy organized by the International Energy Agency in Paris. A global upstream player has placed some of their subsurface data in the cloud and then invited mathematicians, statisticians, and data scientists to see if they could interpret the data. Turns out this crowd of non-experts, that is, their expertise is not from traditional subsurface disciplines, was able to match the performance of the oil company's own in-house experts. Next, a global company, that uh, thinking uh, global equipment company that is producing pumps, controllers, and SCADA systems, projects a 30% improvement in asset utilization by applying digital techniques to the installed base of gear. That's a pretty big productivity boost. Next, a global upstream player forecasts that new digital technologies, that is machine learning and analytics, analytics specifically, will unlock a further 450 billion barrels of oil equivalent from known conventional and unconventional resources by improving recovery rates through digital. That's some $22 trillion of value at stake. Another global equipment company forecasts that almost all oil and gas equipment will achieve greater than 90% availability by eliminating unplanned downtime through digital. Across a large enough business, that's like finding another big plant hidden amongst amongst the others. A demand-side management company in California, leveraging data from energy consumers, helps power suppliers capture megawatts, that is, energy not consumed, through clever analytics that draw on consumer data and in return send targeted behavior signals to consumers. And finally, a global power company forecasts that new digital technologies embedded in industrial equipment, that is, gensets, pumps, and turbines, will yield between a 7 and 15 percent reduction in energy demand through digital. Frankly, digital is already in oil and gas. If employees have smartphones, and it's a good bet they do, then they're digital. All the newest kit coming to the industry, therefore, will become progressively more and more digital. And so the problem for boards is what to do with all the legacy brownfield kit that was never designed for a digital world. 
where there are no wireless networks, where the equipment is manual and mechanical, and where even SCADA has yet to penetrate. The next question is, will digital impact different companies differently? Yes, absolutely. The impacts of digital are not uniform and not symmetrical across industry. Some companies stand to gain more than others. Here's a couple of rules of thumb. For fast cycle capital, digital will enable growth. An unconventional upstream player who drills a $5 million shale well is ideally positioned to apply digital techniques to the well delivery life cycle and transfer lessons and benefits quickly to subsequent wells. I would expect these companies to disproportionately benefit from digital. For long life capital, however, digital enables survival. Once the capital is spent, particularly on plant and equipment, the ca that capital needs to hit high availability targets, run at high utilization, deliver high throughput, and produce on-spec output. Equipment providers foresee, foresee digital improving all of these critical performance curves and in dramatic fashion. Converting kit to be more digitally enabled or installing only the latest digitally smart kit will be key. For equipment providers, digital is becoming table stakes. Some equipment makers will see digital as offering a competitive advantage and will ultimately convert their offerings to be more or exclusively digital. Just look to GE as a case example. For the commercial functions, digital impacts are going to be more even. One digital technology, robotic process automation, can take a lot of the drudgery from existing work practices by automating keystrokes. Blockchain technology will overhaul trading, land transactions, and supply chains. And 3D printing will open up new ways to think about the supply chain to make certain parts at site. And these are just today's examples. No matter the company or its position in the market, it faces a confusing, confounding, and complex digital world. It will need a strategy to address how to embrace digital. Boards also ask, what do we stand to gain by investing now? Boards might contemplate take, taking a wait-and-see view of digital, and that might well be appropriate given a company's specific circumstances. However, there are clear benefits to investing a little in digital today. First is to capture the benefits from some digital developments that have been fully de-risked. A good example is cloud computing. The cloud sector is now led by a few very large organizations, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, and most new software will be built exclusively for the cloud. Second is to do some positioning for the future. A good approach here is to work with the ecosystem of digital technology accelerators, the majority of which, by the way, know very little about oil and gas, and run little pilots and proofs of concept to see what the benefits are likely to be. Third is to build talent and capability. A good area to explore is in the realm of data science. One oil and gas company in Australia, Woodside, has established a data science team to capture more value from data. You can check out their YouTube videos on their advancements. And finally, how about strengthening communities? A good development zone would be in blockchain. Oil and gas has already completed some pilot projects in crude oil transactions on blockchain, and a number of companies are already forming working groups to drive new pilots with more participants. Boards might ask, what bad things will happen if we stand pat? Most boards will want to know what the downside risk is of any investment, including digital, and it, frankly, it's a prudent question when you're responsible for shareholders' money. Well, here's two reasons. First is a compromised market position. Stock market analysts are starting to ask companies to sketch out how they are responding to the digital wave and what investments are being made. They will be comparing companies to each other, engaging competitive position. Discounts will be applied to those companies that are harvesting and not investing in a digital future. Second relates to talent. Employees in oil and gas have been schooled in the discipline of the oil market through the downturn. They know they are dispensable and will be looking to future-proof their own careers. Employers that block digital from their companies are therefore laying the groundwork for talent flight. And talent will have many new options. My Uber driver last week was a software testing specialist looking for his next career. I didn't direct him to any oil and gas company, but instead suggested he check in with any of the many technology incubators now operating in Calgary. These include Rocket Space, Zone Startups, District Ventures, Alberta Innovates, ATBX, and Innovate Calgary. I also thought he could start his own testing service or sign on with one of the digital startups. Final question for a board might be, how should we get started? With all the uncertainty, the hype, the outrageous successes, and the unrelenting sales calls, what should a company do, and by extension, what should the board be looking for? 
First would be a digital strategy. With digital innovations impacting all parts of the economy at the same time, but in unequal measure, boards should be asking management for their digital strategy. That strategy should give considerable thought to the company's economic position, how it stacks up to its peers, and how the company will close performance gaps or capture new tangible growth benefits from digital investments. Too many so-called strategies, to me, are just laundry lists of technologies and where they can be applied to the industry. Second would be establish an investment portfolio. Boards are responsible for approving the allocation of company capital towards investment possibilities. Management should be offering up a constantly evolving digital investment portfolio with a range of initiatives in various stages of development. There should be clarity as to which are driving improved operations, which are enabling growth, and which are innovations to the business. Third would be an ecosystem of assistance and help. Despite all the advantages of incumbency, that is scale, brand, relationships, and experience, it's the small startups that have the upper hand in embracing digital. They have fewer constraints, faster decision-making, lower initial approval hurdles, and creative talent. Boards should look to how oil and gas companies are embracing and working with the ecosystem of startups, incubators, and accelerators. And last would be change management. The biggest challenge for large players in oil and gas is their ability to adopt change. The sector is very change resistant, and rightfully so. Hastily introduced changes in oil and gas are dangerous, and therefore needs to pay special attention to how it will adopt the changes made possible by digital. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitaloilgas.com.